All right, guys, thank you for jumping on another episode of Closing Conquer. I have one of my favorite people in the world. That's wow. actually true. Yeah, that's very powerful. Like, I genuinely like you that much. My buddy, Alex Morton. So thanks for being here, bud. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Of course. And a lot of people that I work with got a chance to hear you at an event we had, you know, a month or so ago, and that was unbelievable. And, and if you don't know Alex, and I want him to tell his story, but let me tell you what was told to me before I met you, Okay. I had a guy that we know mutually, BK, reached out to yep. me. Then a few other guys I worked with, Hayden, a number of other people said, you got to get with this guy and hear him. And I said, why? Because I'm a big like, okay, cool, but why? And what they all told me was he built a successful business at a very young age that he understands the power of networking. He gets people to move. He understands how to get people profitable. And he also genuinely cares about other people winning. I was like... So I don't want, I want you to give us your back, but I mean, you tell me so many stories about being in college and stuff that I, I, I learned at a much later date in life. But for anybody that a lot of, dude, a lot of people know who you are. They've seen you on social media. They've seen you traveling the world speaking. But for anybody who lives under a rock somewhere, they ain't heard of you. Can you give us a quick background on you, your experience, where you are today? Yeah, I mean, I think I'm a guy that really just never gave up and knew what he wanted at a very young age. Um, I grew up in a small town, Bexley, Ohio, very, very small. And I was in this like, you know, when you're in a little town, it's like two pizza shops, two ice cream spots, and you had some rich people, you know, us in the middle, and then you had people struggling financially. And I I don't know what the heck it was, but I remember just getting dropped off at school. You know, my mom drove like uh, an Aurora. My dad had a Ford Expedition. And I just, I guess I saw like nice cars. You know, people had Range Rovers and Mercedes Benzes. And, you know, back then, Alexis was like a supercar to me. Yeah, you know what I no mean? Doubt. And I just always like thought to myself, like, you know, why why do some families take five to six vacations a year? Why do we take one to two? And why do these people, they never leave their, their little city? So I was infatuated at a young age with this idea of like why some people, quote unquote, win mm -hmm. in life. And some people, you know, I know in today's society, you know, there's no losers, but, you know, people lose. Like mm -hmm. if you get to a certain age and you don't have, you don't have, you know, you pretty much are losing in that moment in your life. Mm -hmm. So... I was always interested in uh, entrepreneurship. I stumbled across um, some Tony Robbins audio tapes, cassette tapes back in the day in my parents' basement. Somewhere. Oh, your parents house. Parents' basement, like right. our house we grew up in. I, I was down there. It was like personal power. I started listening to Tony Robbins at a very young age. I was very blessed. Mm -hmm. uh, mom and dad, insurance, life mm -hmm. insurance. Um, you know, they made a little bit of money in real estate in Houston, Texas. Housing market crashed. I want to say $36 million bankruptcy. Okay. My mom's like cleaning uh, hair at hair salons off of the floor. My dad's trying to figure it the hell out. After the bankruptcy. Right. Okay. My mom support my dad. My dad's like, I'm going to figure something out. A little bit of network marketing. Didn't really, you know, they hit six figures and they changed the comp plan, went to hell. Long story short, he fell into life insurance. And it's funny because what you do now mm -hmm. at a very high level, I kind of grew up in a life insurance office. Like I remember mm -hmm. being there fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade in high school, watching the phone room, watching the managers, watching, yeah. they called on the MG as the SGH. So long story short, left Ohio at 18. Um, Want to get the hell out of there. Love Ohio, but the Midwest mindset, great, nice people, but just small dreams, man. Like some mm -hmm. people obviously made it big, but a lot of people are like, go do what everybody else does. Nine to five. And that's the way it is. And that's the only thing that mm -hmm. we talk about. Right. So I went to Arizona state, uh, did some real estate over there for a little bit and then fell into direct sales. And like you said, I mean, it, it's been a tremendous ride. I got in, I sucked. I could not communicate effectively. I was scared to go prospect the the girl serving me ice cream at the ice cream shop. Didn't know what the hell was going on. Everybody told me no. They called it a scam, entrepreneurship's bullshit, this, that, and the other. But I stuck with it. I mastered the skills. I built my confidence and self-esteem and belief system and got, you know, got the shit kicked out of me over and over and over again. But in that company with BK, mm -hmm. uh, was the youngest and fastest ever to make, you know, a million bucks and we'll get into it, but I was kind of like rock bottom to rock star back to rock bottom. And now I'm obviously doing very, very well by, you know, the grace of God and uh, work ethic. I tell everybody, you know, cause you, just like you, what's the secret? What's the secret? Give me the secret. It's like the secret mm -hmm. is discipline Right. Building what building these certain skills and not giving a damn what other people think. Mm -hmm. And knowing that, hey, if you can do it, if Sean can do it, Alex can do it. Mm 
Mm-hmm. If Jason can do it, you know, Brian can do it because at the end of the day, we're all we're all God's highest form of creation and we're human beings. Well, I think, and, and what you just said is a lot to get to, but I want you to help people understand this because one of the greatest things I've been able to do in business and been able to stop others from making this mistake is I convince everybody, because they can, that they can do what I'm doing. Yep. A lot of folks get into business and you listen to them talk. By the time, you, by the time you're done listening to them talk, you're like, Dude, they're convincing everybody they can't do it because they're telling you how fucking awesome they are. And actually, I right. know them. They're not even that awesome. They're just human beings. Like, they're just, and, and one of the rules I have at every company I've run is you can train on sales. But the minute you start talking about how fucking awesome you are, everybody's going to think they can't do it. Right. You just said it. So how do you get people, you're around these guys and girls building these massive businesses. How do you get them to get people to understand and to talk that way and communicate that way that anybody can do what we're doing. Well, the whole idea of facts tell and stories sell, you know, I mm-hmm. teach our our newest person, right? The newest person, it's like, hey, what do I do? I tell people, leverage other people's success stories. Mm-hmm. Like if I got into your main company today as a brand new quote unquote agent, don't know what the hell is going on, but I'm super fired up and excited and I'm gonna go recruit agents, I'm gonna share the success stories of all of these guys. Right, because if if a new person sees a plethora of people winning and making it happen, what happens is it takes the focus off of you, me, the newest person, right? Mm-hmm. It puts it on other people. So when I got involved in direct sales, I made sixteen thousand my first twelve months working my ass off, which isn't really, I mean, it's okay, but mm-hmm. I would have made just as much working in McDonald's. Correct. But year two, I made six figures because I invited them to hear the same presentation, the same story from a Sean or a Brian or a Jason that was making five, 10, 15, $20,000 a month. And when I travel, you know, 77 countries now, uh, in my 34 years of being on this planet, I work with people from all over the world, rich, poor, from Africa to Dubai to Thailand, all over the world. And I tell people, I wish you could see me when I started. Because it's, it, it, it's, it's sometimes it's difficult for, you know, Sean's like, yeah, you can do it. And then they see the boat and the jet and the house and they're like, yeah, yeah, sure. You know, like they see it's just such a insane level of success. But that's why I, I take it back to 2011, 2012. And I share my stories of I was scared. I'm not, I you know, when you're vulnerable and you tell the truth, that's a big thing. Mm-hmm. Lots of people in sales, it's bullshit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's fraud, it's scam, it's scheme, yep. it's, it's you know, you're gonna be a millionaire tomorrow. No, you're not. And I don't care what mm-hmm. industry you're in, right? So when you tell people, hey, when I first started, I had to go through this process. So now what you're doing is you're managing expectations. And the reason why on the internet and some different people, they like to bash network marketing. I've even seen a lot, I've seen stuff on insurance. It's like mm-hmm. they're bashing insurance because people are telling, you know, brand new agents, you can make a hundred grand a month in your first 90 days. Right. Probably can't do that, mm-hmm. right? So managing expectations, using other success stories to kind of quote, sell the idea of what we're doing here and let people know, hey, it's going to take work. I tell people all this, I tell this to people all the time. It's not easy, it's not hard, it's simple, Mm -hmm. and you can do it because all these other people have already done what it is you're trying to do. But you have to have a healthy self-image where you can say, look how good he is. Look how good she is. Because you can't have this big ego in a big business. Correct. when you talk about the story, when I got into insurance, I knew nothing about network marketing. I mean nothing. Born and raised in Connecticut, I was approached probably 12 times to do 12 different deals. Right. I had no problem with that. All I ever said was, show me how much you're making. That's all I ever said to anybody. I was wide open, head on a swivel. What do you make? And every time I did that, the people, instead of bringing me to somebody Correct. that was making money, which I would have gotten in, if they were like, hey, this is Tom's bank statement, or Tom made 21,000, hell, Tom made eight grand last month, I'd right. been fired up. Right. But they were like, I'm not doing it, so they walked away. Str- you talk about struggle, dream, victory. I was raised in mm. that when I got insurance. Like, we had a lot of people who want to talk about victory. Right. <laughs> Dream victory. Okay, what about the struggle, right? How do you help, because you talk to these people all over the world, and they want to build a business so bad. What is the number, there's a lot of things, I'm sure, but what is the number one thing that you try to speak on that we haven't talked about <clears throat> that you say, man, if you would just do this, selling's one, but to build a real business, because you saw it. In college, as building a massive business. Yeah. How many people do you have in your downline? 96,000 people. 96,000 people. Yeah. So how do you get the guy or girl that's got two or none 
or got 12, but they didn't do anything, so I might quit. What is the single biggest thing holding them back to building a massive, massive agency? The number, the number one thing holding people back has got to be their belief system because mm -hmm. that belief system controls so much, right? Like when I teach on like the momentum formula, I tell people it's the the spiritual side of success, which includes your self-image, your self-esteem, your beliefs, right? Plus mastering the skills. Like if you're an agent or you're do, you're doing what I'm doing, like you, you got to know how to prospect, right. present, overcome objections. Because if you can't, you're going to get killed because people are looking for reasons not to join your team. Mm-hmm. What can I do? What can I say to not sign up? What can I do? What can I say to not go get my insurance license? You know what I mean? So I tell people, don't give people a reason to say no. But when someone builds, like for me, because I I, what, I don't teach unless it's something that happened to me. And I remember being in my dorm room, being, you know, barely 21 years old and coming across certain information all whether it was Zig Ziglar eventually I met my mentor Bob Proctor who coached mm -hmm. me for 13 years but even before Bob all these people kept talking about this winning belief system right so I'm like okay so what the hell is this mm -hmm. whether it's a boxer an NBA player a business guy Tony Robbins I met um uh John Paul DeJoria who's a billionaire Paul Mitchell mm -hmm. Systems and Patron whatever and they always talk about believing yourself believing yourself but it's like okay how, how do you believe mm -hmm. in yourself and then you break down what a belief system is. It's it's our belief system is created by the things that we see, hear, and experience. And I don't know, don't quote me on this, but they say the stuff that happens to us when we're kids, mm -hmm. like zero to nine or 10 or 12, whatever it is, as adults, we, we carry all that mm -hmm. trauma, 100%. limiting belief systems. 100%. The teacher told me I was stupid in fourth grade. You may not even remember it consciously today, mm -hmm. but subconsciously that program in file is in there. So then when Sean says you can make 50 grand a month selling insurance, subconsciously this little voice is like, dude, no, you can't. You're a piece of shit. You're stupid. You're from a Midwestern small town, you know, single mom, whatever the hell the story is. So I think when you redefine what your story is, Right, you start telling yourself a different story, I think it really helps you build and mold this belief system mm -hmm. because we all know everybody needs to learn financial education. Everybody needs to be healthy. Everybody needs to protect their families. Like we talked at you know, the convention. I'm like, dude, this is the easiest thing. I, you know, This 100%. would be easier than everything else. 100%. Like how, as, a, as a man who has a family, how do you not have this life insurance thing? Mm -hmm. Like what do you even, what do we we're going to argue why you don't need right. this. What are we talking about? Like, what do you, you know what I'm saying? Right. So it's, it's the story we tell ourselves and it's the belief system. So I learned this at graduate school. I got a master's degree in psychology. And I remember some, somebody asked the professor, they were a behavioral health expert, allegedly, and the doctor. And the person said, what is the biggest reason that people have a low self-image? Which I thought was a pretty good question. And he said the biggest causation of low self-image is lack of unconditional love. Mm. Because the stuff that we carry when we're young, and when people ask me about me, my mother, my mother could pick me up at the state police barracks. I could have run my car, which I did, into a fucking stone wall. I could have beaten the shit out of some guy who was still like in a bad situation. And my mother would tell me she loved me. Mm. Above all else. She was mad. She dealt with it. But she said she loved me. So... In these businesses, you start out when you start talking. You're like, I love everybody. You, there's a lot of love that you like because our the people that are with us. Right. What they want to know is, hey, Alex, if I fail in my first seven presentations, or if I don't get this person started, or if I miss this day over here, are you still going to care about me? Right. Because if not, then you're going to be like everybody else that let me down in the past. And we do carry it. We carry this shit like, like we carry yeah. it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I always mm -hmm. tell people, be blessed for what you have. You have your own stuff. You got great parents. You had your own stuff you had to go through. Everybody's got a journey. How do you help people when they're building this thing realize? Because you do that. You challenge. You educate. Mm -hmm. But, dude, it's love. Like, people feel better when they're done hearing you. How do you help teach other people to do that because it's crazy important those students in college they felt i'm sure i wasn't there that alex got us yeah he's got us yeah. we might f it up but he's still got us how do you teach that and project that as you speak all over the world well i think you know people will 
hear what you're saying that you know the words coming out of your mouth but people really watch your your feet your footsteps mm -hmm. so i've always believed in the idea of being the hardest worker you know i set out to like when i was 22 and i'm like okay shit i got to you know eight to ten thousand a month but there's other people in other companies that are doing eight to ten thousand dollars a day and i said you know literally like this is what i'm doing right i'm like okay i gotta get people to believe in me and i heard this quote from I think the wealthiest network marketer ever, Dexter Yeager. I think mm -hmm. he's the only documented billionaire. Yeah, I know who he is. I don't know many people. He's a, he was a stud. Oh, my God. Yeah. His old tapes are unbelievable, unbelievable. right? Yep. And he said, people, what is it? Pe people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. care. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to out care mm -hmm. this guy. I'm going to out friend this guy. And, and, and people, people felt that. So I guess your, your question is, how do you project that on people? Yeah. It's showing up. And it's given a damn. Like our, say our six figure earners, like when we get on a conference call and I'm talking to, you know, you have to be making 10 grand a month to be on this call. Mm -hmm. It's like, you you don't care about people because they make you money. You care about right. people because they're people. And a lot of leaders, in my opinion, they don't ever get, they, they, they might get to seven figures, but to mm -hmm. get to eight, because the truth is, I agree. A million a year I or agree. a million a month, it's not that you're that much mm -mm. better mm -mm. at speaking and presenting. To be honest, like mm -hmm. at that point, people are following you for who you are. Correct. So it's like, who are you? And, and you know, who are you in, in public, on podcasts, on stages, blah, blah, blah. But who, who are you being behind the closed doors, right? And now we're seeing all this crazy stuff come out about, I don't want to bring up Diddy, but well, this shit. fucking Diddy, you bring it up. It's I like, mean, it's, dude, it's like, your, your shit will come out right. in 2024. 100%. Like, they're listening to every phone call. You, people, oh, I deleted my Snapchat. Dude, it's <laughs> in the ether. Like, I've talked to ex-CIA, FBI deleting means nothing it's all there so so the point is is who are you as a person and a leader because to get to that next 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 level people want to follow you this guy's a good man she's a good woman and for me when i look at mentors i'm like yo how do they treat their kids mm -hmm. how do they treat their their spouse you know a lot, mm -hmm. a lot of guys are doing crazy shit behind closed 100%. doors you know i'm making money now i'm gonna do coke i'm gonna fuck you know yeah. just dumb stuff so if you want people to follow you and you want to you want to project the love onto people, show up, keep your word, be trustworthy, um, and, and and do the right things. Lead by example. And how about being fallible? Meaning, like you said, you bring them back to that. I always trusted people that gave me the true story because nobody's perfect. Right. That freaks me out. They're like, I'm a perfectionist. No, you're a sociopath. <laughs> <laughs> well, nobody's perfect. Exactly. God, like, stop. You know what I mean? Um, so as you're as you're sharing with them, how much do you share about how bad it was? Like, when your mom and dad went through bank, did you know that? Like, how old were you when they went through the bankruptcy? I was like, I think I was a newborn-ish so, so in Houston, Texas. When did you learn about it? You didn't learn Later about in it. life. I didn't really know. No one ever told me this stuff at, you know, fifth. I Correct. mean, I think just later on when we were just talking and I really wanted to, cause we got a network marketing. It's all about your story. Yeah. yeah. So I guess you one day I was know. like, yo, mom and dad, like what's like the actual story here? It wasn't just, you know, cause we, they made, they became millionaires, yeah, multi-millionaires, well not, yeah. you know, crazy. They did great, problem, but they did, yeah. they did great. Right. They're Correct. still getting a check. Correct. 15 years later. Correct. Um, but you're right. Tell, tell people the tough times. Like I share my story because you're right. If you walk in a room, no matter what you're presenting, whatever product, service, or opportunity you're selling, you're right. If people say, you know what, this is great, but this I can never do mm. what he's doing. And, and I had a problem with that, to be mm. honest. I would go do these presentations, and they're on YouTube where 40, 50, 60 young people would be in a backyard. And for me, for some reason, because you know back then, the ego, and nobody was really yeah. teaching me what the hell to do, and I'm making yeah. a good amount of money for that mm. age, I'm thinking it's like, I'm like a singer or a performer. I'm going to go perform. And the problem right. was, is they're like, yo, Alex is great, but I can't go up there and do what he just did. Right. So the last five years and today, I let people know, listen, I got kicked out of the dorms at 18 years old. I got mm -hmm. I got asked to leave the business school. I was handcuffed by mm -hmm. the Tempe police. Because what, you, mm -hmm. what you're actually doing is you're bringing yourself down mm -hmm. to where the prospects and the audiences are right now, and then they can relate with you. And when you're more relatable, there's a higher chance of them getting started in your business. Plus, most people have their own fear of being judged. So when you dump your own stuff out there, yep. I remember we started 
by accident doing some stuff on social media. And one of the guys at work was like, hey, did you see that guy commented about you getting arrested at the airport? And I said, yeah, let me comment back. He's like, you want to block and delete him? And he was like, didn't you get arrested for carrying a loaded gun? And I responded and said, who the fuck carries an unloaded gun? Because that seemed like the best response. Like, why would you carry it? Are you going to throw it at somebody? And my point was, everybody, is, dude, I don't care. Like, you, you have to develop this thickness of skin where you show people you don't give a shit. Yep. Like, and that's part of my deal. I did it at a convention. We had a... I said, I want to get really uncomfortable. So they were like, you should wear... I had... Did you see the suit I wore when Chan, I interviewed Shannon Sharp? You had... You you were wearing crazy suits the whole time. Dude, it was bright, bright, bright. That yellow had nothing. I, yeah, I, I was... Yep, yep. But dude, I was like... like highlighter you know, yellow. Yeah, highlighter yellow. And I was like, dude, you know what? Who gives a shit? Like, but it's, it's helping people understand that because you're sitting in rooms of people and obviously you do really well at this. So I want you to talk about this. And, and the problem is, and you said it earlier, it isn't that complicated. And then what happens is people want it to be complicated so they can go, that's why I couldn't do it. And right. it was complicated, right? right? And we're trying, you, you do really, you talk to all these people who have to hear all this noise about how dumb what they're doing is because it's not a nine to five, it's stupid. Like it's just dumb yeah. from family, yeah. from friends. How do you help them protect that mindset? Because they're gonna hear it. They're going to, and a lot of them are young. You can't tell a 20 year old, you know, I go to meetings and people get mad at me. I was in a meeting in Vegas one day, like 4,000 people. And the kid stood up and he was like, I got a question for you. And I was like, sure, go ahead. And he's like, what do you do when you have a person in your life and they're bringing you down? I said, well, it depends on who it is. He said, my girlfriend. I said, are you married? He's like, no, girlfriend. I go, well, fucking break up with her. Yeah. And then she was next to him. And she, I said, is that her? He goes, yeah. I said, just this is him. Just trying to go like, hey, we ain't no longer together. Like, she's not married. Do you have any kids? He goes, no, no kids, no marriage. Fuck it, who cares? And I, <laughs> But that's how I feel, yeah. right? <laughs> Not so great because I'd like, you know, they, they <laughs> broke up anyway, so I was, I was right. But my, my point <laughs> is that it's getting people, you can't tell them not to talk to their mom or dad. That's right. ridiculous. Right. right. If it's a marriage, I ain't messing with that at all ever. I want everybody to be married forever. So I'm just kind of, how do you help empower people the right way where it's like, I know they're going to say this and they might even be in my life, but how do I find a way, Alex, to move forward and not let it affect me? sharing facts and figures with them and then telling them the truth. So when I open up a room, sometimes I'll say things like, listen, tonight you may say, wow, this sounds different. But if 3% of the population own all the real estate, the gold, the, the, the stocks, the money and the wealth, wouldn't it make sense to do something different? Right. So right away they're like, holy shit. Yeah. I don't want to be the 97%. No, I yeah, want, it's I like, want to be in. you know, I draw that on the on the board. I write I write rich and I write poor. And I say rich, residual income creates happiness. Poor, passing over opportunities repeatedly. And I, I write out the cash flow quadrant. Mm -hmm. And I say, listen, man, three, th you know, business owner and investor own everything. Mm -hmm. And I tell people, you know, if this is what Bob Proctor told me. If someone doesn't have a life, not a life, a lifestyle, you would not trade your lifestyle with theirs. He said they are disqualified Correct. from giving you advice on business and success. You know, if dad makes $20 an hour at the steel mill, he can still be a great father 100%. and a great barbecuer and all these different things. But, and I say this to people, I say, but dad may not be the best person mm -hmm. to ask, hey, how do I become a millionaire? He ain't one. And I used to get a lot of heat. I got a lot of heat in my first company because I would go on college campuses and I would say, you could like look up uh, salaries of professors. And I was very, I'm still intense, but back then, man, I was just a nutcase. Mm -hmm. And I would say, Professor Filer in the business school pulls up in a Toyota, mm -hmm. makes $52,000 a year. Nothing's mm -hmm. wrong with that. Correct. But if you, Derek, are telling me I'm going to be a millionaire, Mr. Filer can't teach you how to do that. Does that make sense? They're like, yeah, that may, it, it, all, it always makes sense. You know, I'm not lying to people, mm -hmm. right? So when you tell people the facts and the figures of the world, I saw some stat, this may be true. I think it's probably true. Most American families don't have 10 grand in a savings account. 100%. 100%. I hear, I'm like, how the fuck can that even be? I know. So that's what I tell people. And the younger they are, the more their minds actually, you know, open and now with social media when i'm talking especially young guys i'm like what do you do all day well you're on tiktok and instagram mm -hmm. you're what you're you're looking at cars boats jets vacations you can't afford right now so instead of saying i'll never be able to afford that you need to be thinking how the hell can i get that correct 
And when you're in an unlimited earning opportunity, like what you do and what I do, which is the truth, mm -hmm. you can achieve everything that you want. So when you just lay it all out there, it may, you may hurt some people's feelings, but at the end of the day, the people that get turned on when you, when they hear certain things, like I did when I was 21 years old, that's who you want to work with anyway. Mm -hmm. So again, tell the truth, give them the facts, give them the figures. I tell people, listen, guys, here's the deal tonight. Most people you and I know, most of your family, most of my family, most of your friends and my friends, they're not financially wealthy. Would you agree? They're like, yeah, I would agree. Okay, so we need to listen to people that guess that that actually have right. what you want. Would you? And it's common sense. You know, I had a mm -hmm. I had a two point nine GPA in high school. I went to Arizona State. Let's in everybody. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be a freaking uh, IQ, you know, phenomenon, you know, lawyer, doc. You don't. You just need to have a little common sense. Mm -hmm. I tell people logic, common sense, and intuition. Those three things will allow you to make sure you're following the right path and listening to the right people. The thing nowadays, how old are you? 34. 34. So I'm 51. Mm -hmm. Okay. When I was raised and I was 20, the people that were in any position of authority, they didn't lie to me. They weren't afraid of my feelings. They were actually not supposed to be. Matter of fact, we were taught that it was really selfish to do that. So my coaches, my team, everybody... Had we said he only makes, it, nobody cared. We were right. all fine. It was a different world, right? Correct. Now you say something, it's like, man, that's really hard coaching. Or let's put him on a hot seat. Or let's do this. And it's like, dude, I'm just having a conversation with him. And it's trying to get people to understand how disrespectful it is to fucking lie to him. Like to just look him in the eyes and go, I know he shouldn't be doing these three things. I know he'll make money if he stops. But fuck, how do I tell him not to do it? And it's funny you say that because my mom, who I love my heart and soul, my parents are in their 70s and they're probably lived to their 100, man. They look great. But I told my mom when I was like 12, like, I love you with all my heart, but I'll take it from here. Right. Like, right. I got it from here. I used to got to drive me places. I respect you as my mom. But as far as what I'm going to do in the future, like, I got it. Yeah. Because you don't know how to get me there and you don't know anybody else that can get me there either. And, and, and I want to ask you about this because what I started doing was I started – I found my mentorships through my value. And at 12, 13, 14, the only value I had was athletic value. So I was like, all right, how do I get these people to like me? Like John's dad's rich, Mike's dad's rich. I'm good at sport. Hey, you know what? I'll play in their fucking travel team. I'll become their friends. I got mentored, but I brought something to the table. Right. How do you teach people to seek out appropriate mentorship? And also that they have to bring something to the table. Yeah. You'll mentor people, but they got to bring something to the table. How do you get people to understand how to actually navigate, negotiate, and find good mentors? Yeah, well, they say um, when the student is ready, the mentor will appear, the teacher will appear, right? Yeah. So what I was doing back then, because my mentors in my industry actually were coming from other companies. So I was actually sneaking into other companies' presentations and recording these people and studying all their free... Because a, lo a lot of times right now, you get on YouTube University mm -hmm. and learn so much like millions and millions of dollars worth of education mm -hmm. for literally F-R-E-E. -E. Right. But I'll tell people, especially in 2024, get it, getting in the right rooms, and sometimes that costs a little bit of money, man. Mm -hmm. You know, you can buy a cheap ticket to some of these seminars or shit, you know what, try to sneak your ass in. I mean, I, I, did, I was doing that mm -hmm. back in the day. I didn't care, mm -hmm. right? I would, I, I would get into these... You know, this this Tim guy was making 80 grand a month in Arizona in a, in a skincare company. I was making no grand a month mm -hmm. in my company. And I saw flyers where he was going to go speak. And I would I would act like I was a prospect for their company. I would go in there and sit and watch this guy present mm -hmm. and learn. So there's a, there's a couple. You can get creative with it and go go to where these mentors are and do your best to get around them, whether that's buying a ticket or buying their book or doing something. But like you said, bring value. So if you're listening to this and you're in any company where you're paid on commission, you're like, you know, will you mentor me or will you help me? It's like, listen, man, you you got to show up first, right? When you but you bring your value through your actions. Like when I'm in these markets, and I I know all the names of all the six and seven figure guys. I might do. We need to go have dinner with everyone in your group. It's called Platinum Two Thousand. They're making two grand a month. I might do. I I want to get in the room with your brand new guys and girls making $2,000 a month. Mm -hmm. And then I'm in there. I'm like looking for the next killer. Mm -hmm. 
the next superstar, right? So if you're if you're listening to this and you want more mentorship, you have YouTube University, you have lots of audiobooks and you know, real books and you know, seminars and masterminds and all these different things. And you can go find where these people are are speaking and attend their events. But you're right, people like you are so damn busy, there's gotta be a value add. 100%. You know, like some of these guys that want to do videos for me. You know, the ones that I respond to on Instagram, they they send me an edited video. Mm -hmm. They're like, yo, check out this All thing I made for you. I'm day. like, wow, kid is smart. Because mm -hmm. everybody else, I'm not even, because I just don't have the fucking time to do it. Mm -hmm. So when you're bringing value, you know, learn, like if someone's like, yo, I want to get closer to Sean. It's like, okay, and, and maybe they're not even in your company, right? Mm -hmm. Learn a little bit about Sean's life. Maybe maybe you can, through social media, you can find out what he likes, what he enjoys to do, and then try to get creative somehow, some way with that. Correct. And bring value, bring, you know, joy, do something to positively impact Correct. the person. Like, I wanted to get close to um, Rob Deerdick, right? Mm -hmm. So his wife was in network marketing. I, Brianna, who were, friend, we're friends, right? And I'm in network marketing and there I'm like, okay, the, his wife's going to be at this event I'm speaking at. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be at the event, blah, blah, blah. So I would, I reached out to Brianna and I'm like, Hey, if you want me to do, um, this is when I was making good money. I'm like, if you want me to train your team and your, your other company, like I'll do it. Right. And mm -hmm. I think I did a training on zoom for her team. And then we did mm -hmm. this like influencer thing together where you went to the Grove in LA and where Alex mm -hmm. Morton and Brianna Deirdrick are going to be here, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then that led to me eventually getting at a, a blackjack table with Rob. Mm -hmm. We're both from Ohio. We start talking and now we built a friendship and he spoke in my event. Long story short, I f I'm like, okay, I want to get like, I want to learn from this guy. Cause he's worth hundred, you know, I don't even know now, probably five or $600 million. Mm -hmm. He's from a tiny little town like me in Ohio. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring value to his most loved person. And then, you know, karma in the universe is going to reward me, right? So that's a creative way to get to a quote-unquote mentor. If I text him right now, will he text me right back? Probably not, but he'll text me back in the next 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So that's a great example of like right. connecting the dots. Right. The problem is when you have no creativity, it's just lazy. When you send the same thing everybody else sends, it just basically says I'm fucking lazy mm -hmm. and putting time into it. Now, I'm going to end with this because... You seem to be really chill. Like you have a good attitude, you're excitable, but you seem chill as a person. Like Yeah, I'm calm. I'm pretty calm. You're pretty calm. What makes Alex Morton angry? It takes a lot. Okay. But what what I'll what, tell you what one thing, man. I get it could be three in the morning. Um, you know, my dad, one of my best friends, right? He's right. very um he's very into the political climate. Mm -hmm. He's very into like the he's very upset about the destruction of the country that we love so much. Yep. So he'll send me reels on Instagram. So one thing that makes me angry is seeing certain things happening in, um, I want to say the greatest country in the world. Like I love America. You know, it, it, everyone comes from immigrants, right? right? Like everyone comes from immigrants. I get it. I understand mm -hmm. it. So I, what, what, what makes me mad is, 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 is the demonizing of success, mm -hmm. the demonizing of this killer instinct. Like I was listening to a podcast driving up here Dana White was talking about there was some high school team and mm -hmm. they were they got penalized mm -hmm. for beating teams by too many points. Mm -hmm. And he called the school and said, I want to fly the whole basketball team out to a mm -hmm. UFC fight because this is Correct. bullshit. Yep. So the so the demonizing of success in this country angers me. Um the weakness as a country angers mm -hmm. me. Cause like I don't want to be forced to leave the country that I love so much. But I'm talking, I'm listening to like a mentor, uh, one of my mentors, Patrick Bet David's a mentor. And when mm -hmm. I hear him speak about if we don't change what's going on, what could actually be happening in the next four to eight years, it scares me. So that's mm -hmm. one thing that angers me. Another thing that angers me is good people who work hard, who love God, who are good hearted people, never getting a better life. One of the reasons why I still travel my ass off and do what I do, and I go into third world countries, and whether I'm sitting with one or I'm sitting with 10,000 people, and I give, I quote unquote, give them my all to the point where I walk off stage, I'm fucking sweating and I could pass, like I've literally, I've emptied my tank, right? Mm -hmm. I do that because it makes me angry and upset, you know, when good people are in this 
rat race and they don't know that they don't know. Like I'll never, like there's like uh, Lima, Peru, Quito, Ecuador, Mexico, thousands of people. And I'm just like, these are just the nicest people mm -hmm. and they're getting paid, you know, pay, you know, shekels, pay, like little bits of money. They barely can feed their kids. And it makes me irate to the point where all I want to do is help them Forget it. You don't need to be a millionaire. An extra six hundred dollars a month in a lot of these countries. Like I was in, I was recently in Peru. It's like forty five hundred people showed up, and I'm I'm having lunch with all the leaders, and they're like, "Listen, Alex, if these people can earn an extra hundred dollars a week, yeah, it's life changing." And to me, it's such such a crazy idea. So I want to help people get free. Like I think one of my purposes on this earth is to provide the accurate information and help people break free and then fight the evil out there mm -hmm. who want people sick, poor, broken, on drugs, Medicaid, depression, ADD, ADHD, it's just bullshit. Mm -hmm. And that, you can, you know, that gets me. I want people to live a good life. Yeah. You know, is that so bad? Well, first of all, thank you for that. You're unfucking believable That was great. And it's funny you said about a hundred bucks because I got recruited in 08 to make an extra $500 a month in America. <laughs> hundred something dollars a week. Five, you want to make an extra five hundred dollars a month? That's the dude asked me, and I was like, I want to make more than that, but but uh, talk to me, yeah, because he didn't promise me eighty two million dollars in six weeks, which I would have known was a lie, you know. Right. And I think, listen, man, we're gonna be, uh, we're gonna keep fighting the good fight. God is great. We ain't gonna have to go anywhere. That's right. And um, I think we're gonna have a good good end to this year. Yeah. But uh, I really appreciate you guys. If you don't follow Alex Morton everywhere, he travels all over the world. He'll be at our event we have next year. Shit, I don't care about having repeat speakers if they're good they got to be good Me so you'll too. be back so life is good and guys i really appreciate jumping on another episode of closing conquer if you like this video like subscribe share it get to know alex follow him he's everywhere brother i appreciate what you do for us appreciate what you do for me i consider you a friend and i appreciate you being on thank you very much and ditto uh everything you said about me i can say about you i mean I, like i said i met a lot of people and a lot of people older than me and even some guys that do have some of the toys and stuff. But like I said it on stage, you know, you are definitely one of the, I can say it, one of the, one of the few that actually genuinely does care. Doesn't just say they care, but does care about the success of other people. Well, so I appreciate you thank you. That. And we said that earlier, man, it's selfish to get yours and stop. Right. It's not a, well, I just I got complacent. No, you got yours and you stopped. So you can say whatever you want. Makes you feel better that way. You just stop because hey, I got mine. Screw everybody else. If we want to get the, if we want to get things better, we help more good people do well. That's right. That's the way it works. So appreciate y'all. Thanks.